Bama basketball in the Elite Eight, taking on Clemson for a chance at a Final Four. That'd be the first time ever for the Crimson Tide. We're going to talk about that. Chris Smelly, your prayers, our prayers, they worked. And uh, he survived. He, but it was an ordeal for the former Alabama pitcher and South Carolina quarterback. But thank God that he's okay. We're going to get into that. And Alabama still bringing in some big-time recruits as – Spring practice continues. We're going to talk about one of those guys, a target as well. All that right here on the Bama Tailgate YouTube channel. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. Give us a thumbs up just based on the fact that no matter where I'm at, we're doing a show, and you guys don't even know where I'm at right now. But I'll tell you, Chicago, Illinois. Let's get this party started, everybody, with a big roll tide. Hey everybody, I'm Mick Gillespie with the guy that you know lovably as Big Sexy Elmo, or maybe you know him as Brett Elmore from the Brett Elmore Show. I'm at Broadcaster Mick. Brett, you're not going to believe what happened to me today, and I'm going to show you that right there. There's For years, there was a bar in Wrigleyville, and I'm in you know, Chicago, uh, that was called the Houndstooth, the Houndstooth Saloon. Not to be confused with the Houndstooth that's in Tuscaloosa. Right. Well, it's it's not there anymore. But it was an Alabama bar. And okay. so uh, I had a meeting. And before that, I went into this place right here called Almost Home. Yeah. And I'm talking to one of the owners. And I said, and I, I'm not thinking anything Alabama. And I look over and I see a championship tin on the wall. And then I see a roll tide and I'm like, what is this? And he's like, Oh, we're an Alabama bar. We're the Alabama bar now. And he was like, and last night was crazy. Oh, I bet. And tonight is going to be crazy too, because uh, Alabama is playing to get into the final four. And um, he was telling me how great that is. Now, I'm going to be out of here before the game, but uh, almost home in Wrigleyville. If you guys are close by, hit the uh, hit that and check it out. Really good people. And um, that's our new embassy in Chicago. Beautiful. I love it. I yeah. love it. I love it. And it just you just – you have that crimson nose. Ah, I, 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 could, I could sniff out a Crimson Tide bar anywhere. I want it to be like – I want it to be like this. Do you even know who I am? <laughs> right, 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 yeah, <laughs> You're yeah. telling me Roll Tide? You don't. Yeah. You don't know Roll Tide. You don't know what. It, no, man. I'll tell you what. It was great. It was, it, it's just a fantastic bar. And uh, what a pleasant surprise. Uh, Clark Street, Chicago, Illinois. And there, There's the information. All right. Let's get into it. I haven't got your opinion on the uh, huge win over North Carolina uh, tonight, Alabama plays against Clemson for a chance to go to the final four. Brett, I'm going to tell you this. I don't know if you've heard in the history of Alabama basketball, they've never been to the final four, but let's talk about your feelings on the, uh, the, 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 the game, the sweet 16 game that got them to the elite eight. Man. Uh, what a, what a great ball game, man! I, I tell you, I, it, it reminded me of two heavyweights, uh, a battle, and Alabama never gave up, even though they were down by three with ninety seconds to play. Come roaring back, and of course, Grant Nelson, the stash, the stash, and I tell you, the first player in NCAA tournament history. With more than 20 points, more than 10 rebounds, five blocks, two three-pointers in a single game, and that is Grant Nelson. Finishing up with 24 points, 12 rebounds, five blocks, 67% from the floor, and a perfect two-for-two two from three-point land. And uh, I was happy for him. Uh, happy for the entire team. 
I'm still shocked, man. I I mean, as bad as he played the first two games, to come that to to come into that game and play like, you know, like a like the best player on the court, amazing. Yeah, he just uh, played so well and uh, happy for him. But we needed somebody, you know, to step up, and uh, and he did, and and. Uh, uh, a huge win for the program, uh, and it just cements the fact, Mick, that um, you know, talent-wise, uh, I, I, you know, I wouldn't call it even with North Carolina. What uh, what I what I did see though is is we have an elite coach. Oh yeah, I mean, we have an elite coach. And that leads us to tonight against Clemson, and we've talked about it in previous shows. We were going to face the winner of the Clemson-Arizona game, and that's two teams that we've played earlier in the year. Um, And, you know, you play a schedule like that to get to this point, and it just so happens you're going to meet one of those teams again in Clemson. Now, Clemson uh, forever, even late into the season, was the one team that that beat Alabama on – it's home floor. They did. Give us a tell us about that game. I know you and I were talking about that off the air. Um, 85 77 was the final. Um, um, and and just looking at the kind of the, the, the stats and everything, um, Clemson was 52% from behind the arc. Wow. Um, we were uh, 31% from behind the arc. So that's sort of a glaring um, glaring number there. And also Clemson, I mean, they just played better than we did. And actually they played, uh, I'm surprised it was just 85-77. They were 53% from the floor. Wow. And we were only 34% from the floor. I don't know how it was this close, um, but – Looking at, uh, you know, the final numbers, we had three players at double figures led by, of course, Sears with 23. Uh, Estrada had 16, and Nelson had 14 in that game. Um, you know, we'll we'll probably be without right cell again, uh, but in that game he only had five points. Pringle only had four. Now, he got uh, um, injured uh, in the game against North Carolina with that heel um, and I really don't know what his status is. I think he'll be fine. But uh, what what guts to play on that injured heel for the half of the game because he was in obvious pain and uh, uh, limping around everywhere. Um, interesting matchup. Um, this this regular season game occurred in in November, I believe. It was early in the season. Uh, it was about. Did you, know it was an, did you know it was an elite eight matchup back then? No, I did. You did. <laughs> well, okay, I didn't. I didn't. You're right. Well, I was about to say, uh, and, and I and I have to admit, Mick, I, I, I've been hard on Alabama. I said Sweet Sixteen and then done, and uh, I have to eat my words. And I'm glad I have to eat my, my words. Who Never told delicious. you Bama was? Who told you Bama by two? Uh, some, uh, some, some guy named Mick Gillespie. I thought it was going to be one twenty to one eighteen, but I'll take eighty nine. Yeah. I don't yeah. really care. I, I, I just had a good feeling about that game. Now, this one, they, they better be ready to go. Yeah, you know, they better be ready to go. It, there's, it, 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 no one's going to have pressure as an underdog. Yeah, it's, it's a different matchup. You know, they're, they're, it's even. Uh, I think Sears, who scored 18 points last game, is going to have a better game. But uh, the other guys got to support them. You know, Griffin and Estrada both had 19 points each. They need to chip in. I, I I can't imagine Grant Nelson even doing anything close to what he did against Carolina. I and and that's no that's no disregard for him. I mean, I'm just saying like. It just – that was amazing, man. Like, that that's next level right there. I tell you what, if we do get that kind of play um, again, um, we'll, we'll win handily. Yeah, um, I'd love to you see. Know, 
you know, it's it's all about playing well in March, and um, maybe we're finally, <laughs> finally getting everything together right at the right time. It would be sweet, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, yeah, and and I tell you, um, it's it, it really is of all the hard work, you know, all of the great recruiting, all the coaching, and everything that we've seen Nate Oates do. It it, it paid off. Yeah, you know, like it paid off. And him sticking with Alabama when if I I don't know if I was him, I wouldn't have bolted for one of these other jobs with a great facility and more NIL money, but he likes Alabama and I love that he does. But yeah, there's, but if you get to the final four, man, that is a big deal. Elite eight's great. Final four is a big deal. Big deal. And, um, uh, you need to break out the shovels, uh, there, Alabama and go ahead and, and, and break ground on that new facility like Monday morning. Yeah. I'm with you, brother. Uh, seven forty nine tonight. Uh, rematch Alabama and Clemson, and we can't wait for it. All right, let's talk a little bit of football as we hang out with you here on the Bama Tailgate YouTube channel. Um, guys, like and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. And um, there he is, Javion Campbell, three-star, Frankfurt, Germany. No. No, sorry. No, 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 no. Frankfurt, Kentucky. Close. <laughs> Close. Guten Tag. Uh, yeah, Frank for Kotoki. Wie uh, viel was this? Uh, yeah, six five two sixty five. Another edge guy. He's a three star, but um, they're going like after these edge guys. They're they're trying yeah. to get. They're they're looking for that pass rush right now. Yeah, they really are. And and you kind of say, and and it's kind of ridiculous that we think this way now, but you say a three star. Yes, a three star. But let me tell you something. Uh, this guy's first time to play football was this past year. Uh, his junior season was his first year to play high school football. He finished with uh, right at 15 sacks. And he's also a outstanding basketball player. Um, very athletic. Uh, uh, has the frame to kind of. Uh, still grow further with with his size and 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 game, um, and uh, uh, you know it's um, one of those guys that uh, uh, is from Kentucky, and he he's he's been offered by Alabama, uh, but I tell you what, he uh, uh, he's really warmed up to his 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 home state team in the Wildcats. Uh, George is looking at him. Ohio State's looking at him, so uh, and Alabama, of course. So this this goes to tell you sometimes when you look at those stars beside that name, don't let that fool you. Mm -mm. All right, let me ask you about this. Uh, when we do uh, tomorrow's show, we're gonna have Catfish on with us. I just mm -hmm. want to ask your you your opinion on this right here. What do you think Catfish is gonna say when we play this? They call him Big Sexy. Coming at you from the Walker County. He better love it. Jasper is his hometown. He's no forgiving free right now. Oh, Big Sexy. Throwing out those Alabama thoughts. Sneaking out your mom's window without getting caught. Ah, uh, yes, coming to Spotify soon. Is that uh, it's so that you're saying that that was the um, the West Jasper Seven that put that together, huh? Yeah, West Jasper Seven and uh. Laid down those tracks for me, and I love it. Great intro. That's fantastic. Well, tomorrow's show, guys, we're going to ask – we're just going to surprise Catfish with that video and see what he thinks. Yeah, yeah. We're going to have to. And uh, hopefully, hopefully we'll be all excited about the Final Four, or we're going to be uh, depressed one way or the other. Yeah, yeah, one way or the other, but we'll be on, uh, we'll be on tomorrow. All right. Roll Tide, everybody. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, uh, we – Hey, uh, let's uh, uh, before we go. Let's talk about the uh, 
the uh, Chris yes. Dunning deal. Let's, yeah, you know what? Before I close shop here, let's get into this. You guys and us, and we were serious. Uh, yesterday, um, you know, we were praying for uh, during the, the press conference. We got finished the press conference, and we, uh, the Caleb DeBoer, it was that two days? Was that two days ago? Or yeah, yesterday? Thursday, yeah. Okay, and um, we we were praying for for Chris Smelly. And I told you guys, I saw him play football in high school. And um, I sat next to some of his family at one of the Alabama national championship games. And um, we, we were really worried because he had disappeared kayaking. There, there was a player um, in one of my first teams I ever broadcast for, and he went on a canoeing trip and, uh, and died. They, they, they took like a couple days to find his body. Like he went underwater and never came back up. Mm. And, and that happens, man. I mean, you get out on the water and sometimes they, you know, stuff like that happens if you're not wearing a life, life vest and he disappeared. Nobody knew where he was. And then I'll let you take the story, but we were really concerned. And I'm going to tell you, man, your prayers worked. I really do believe that. Uh, you got that right. And yeah, I mean, he, uh, he, he, he even admit he was just he, – he's done it so many times that you – and you know how it is, Big. You get kind of careless, and and, and uh, he, he wasn't wearing a life vest. Um, he decided he was going to leave his phone behind, uh, even though he had a Ziploc bag to bring it with him, you know. Um, but he got there on the open water, and um, uh, the wind and, the, and, the, and I guess the, the, the current just uh, took him out. Um, and that was uh, two or three times he said that he almost flipped over, uh, but didn't. And um, uh, there was, uh, of course, the helicopters were looking for him. They, they passed him by two or three times, missed him. It was about to get dark. It was about to, um, uh, the helicopters were about to call off the search. Uh, as a matter of fact, they were getting ready to do that. When finally they spotted him at, at the last moment, he thought he was going to have to spend the night out there. He was uh, bound and determined because he is an athletic guy. Yeah. He was he was bound and determined to make it back to the shore uh, by uh, paddling, um, but he knew he wasn't going to have the energy. So he caught a um, I forgot what kind of fish it was, but it was like a shark, and he was going to cut this shark up and eat it. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. Uh, you, you would think, uh, and and then that's you know oh, he's gonna looking. ride. He's gonna ride it like he's gonna lasso it. And yeah, it. well, I mean that would have been a good idea too. But but no, he was going to eat it. He was like, it probably wasn't going to be the best tasting sushi ever. But I needed the uh, the energy from it. And uh, and right before he was going to eat this shark, the uh, the helicopter found him, and he was like. He just turned it loose, you know. Yeah. So uh, uh, anyway, uh, they they met back up at a restaurant. The, everyone was happy, and he got to watch the basketball game. And um, uh, I, I'm glad it ended the way it did. But boy, isn't he embarrassed right now? I, I got a, a boat that's 20 feet. It's a center console boat. Depending yeah. on what the wind's like, yeah, I wouldn't go out that far. Yeah. Think about being on a kayak. <laughs> yeah. He he thought he was like six miles off of shore, and they were like, no, you're only two and a half miles. Uh, but it seemed like forever, you know, obviously yeah. when you're out there. It's hard, man. You, you it, Once you kind of get out that far with the, the, the currents and stuff in those kayaks, you, I mean, and, and anything can happen. So good for him, man. I'm glad that he's – I was really happy when you texted me that because yeah, I, me I too. figured that we were going to – uh, the guy that I was talking about was a guy named Ryan Walker, and he was a, a Tampa Bay Rays minor leaguer. Mm. And you know, and and I and I worry about that stuff when people yeah. say, you, you know, I anything can happen out there. So good for him. I'm I'm glad for all of us that he made it. All right. He, he said uh, no more fishing uh, uh, except for uh, from uh, the shore. Yeah, good idea, Chris. Good idea. Uh, you can catch uh, Big Sexy Elmo every morning on WJLX. Isn't that right? Monday through Friday, 6 until 10, streaming live at WJLX1015.com and all the major uh, streaming apps. All right. And uh, you guys know 
that were brought to you by Pearl River Resort over in Choctaw, Mississippi. And you know this. They've got the sports book, which would be a great place to watch tonight's game. Uh, if Bama makes the Final Four, swing over there. You can place legal bets just like out in Vegas. They've got the slots. They've got the table games. They've got Dancing Rabbit Golf Course, which is the Augusta you can play. you got a bachelor party coming up. You want to just reconnect with some of your buddies. Great place to do it. They also have some amazing acts this year. They're celebrating 30 years out there, which is really even more amazing to me. But Big and Rich are going to be there. Gretchen Wilson with them. Boys to Men are going to be out there. Uh, Brian McKnight's going to be out there. Um, Lone and, ju- and and just announced, just announced two days ago, three days ago. Cinderella's uh, Tom Kiefer and his band will be there with special guests. Do you remember these guys? The L.A. Guns. Oh, yeah. like Look, that's some 80s music coming at you right there. Yeah, that's in August. Yeah. All right, so check it out for yourself, guys, at Pearl River Resort, pearlriverresort.com. All right, for Brett Elmore, I'm Mick Gillespie. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Let's hope uh, Bama can roll in hoops, and we'll talk to you soon. 